This is part 8 of the basic Python programming tutorial for new and intermediate Blender users. All right, in the previous lessons we looked at the general interface and getting around and some basic programming and we'll get back to that here in a few lessons but we need to cover some details that are really really important and once we get these basics out of the way that will really help us do uh, much cooler designs down the road. So this is a basic scene that I've started up just have a plane and a cube in the scene and let's go over to the programming thing. A couple uh, things, you can either click the menu here and go into the scripting mode like that or you can just hold down the control key and press the right arrow key twice and if you go press it left then you go back to that scene so it's a quick way to move around. So normally what I'd like to do in here is I come in here, I bring this down here, I come over here grab another window like this and I make that my info window and that tells us what's going on in the scene if I move the cube like that. It'll give me the information right here. Alright, so let's take a look at the mesh. So this is an object in the scene and that's selected. Now this is the active object right this. But the mesh in the scene represents all the points within the mesh. The vertices, lines, edges, faces, things like that. Okay, and what we want to be able to do is control two things when we do our uh, programming designs is we want to be able to move the object, rotate the object, things like that, but we also want to be able to, if I was in edit mode, I also want to be able to take these vertices and move them as well. So I want to be able to modify the mesh itself. Now this is adequate for um, working within Blender Render, but if you're working within the game engine, it, I'll be covering future coding examples within the Blender game engine as well, but within the Blender game engine you can't actually modify the mesh points. You can modify colors, materials, things like that, but you can't actually move the points within the mesh, at least currently. That might change. You never know in the future. But we can do it within Blender Render. And so a lot of times I actually mix and match code f within the same program. Not if I want to create a final example, but just sometimes I use BPY code and sometimes I use BGE code, which is the Blender Game Engine code. But what we want to be able to do in this lesson is modify the mesh. So let's get out of here and let's look at, if you go into the templates, you can always get some example things. Now this is a really interesting thing. So we'll go look at B-Mesh Simple. All right. And now B-Mesh Simple has this little program. And what it does, it says import BPY, import B-Mesh. All right. So that's the way we're going to get access to the mesh itself, the mesh data. And here's the, it says ME, they call it, for getting the mesh data itself. They create an empty mesh, they fill it from a mesh, and you modify the B mesh. You can do anything. So in here they're saying for for V in the in this mesh, for every so what it basically says for every vert vertex within the mesh, uh, increment the vertex location in the X direction by one unit. And then finish up and write the B mesh data basically back to the mesh. Alright, so we'll say well, okay, we'll try it. We'll run it. We'll see what happens. Okay, so you run the script. When nothing happens, right? Well, it does. If you actually go click in the window, you see the you see the object move. All right, but has the object moved or has the mesh moved? Well, the reality is the mesh has moved. And I can tell you, let's do it again. Let's run two, three, three more times and click it again. So now it's moved again. But I'm telling you the mesh has moved and not the object per se. And You can verify that because the object origin is still right back here at the center. Alright, so let me see if I can control Z all those guys back here. So there I am back to this location. And then if I was to just move the object manually like this using the mouse, then by moving it, notice the object center follows along at the same time. Well, that would be actually moving the object data at the same time, that would tell me. But in the other way, when the object center stays there, I've known that I've just moved the mesh by itself. All right, so we're going to fix up a few things in this particular program, and just to uh, so you can verify this. One is what we're going to do is we're going to add some code right here that I've got saved in a buffer right here. Update the mesh with new data. And this is dot update calc edge is equal true. Just type this in. And what this will allow you to do is when you run the script, it'll actually update the scene so I don't have to click it and see what's going on. And let's see if that actually works. This is this is probably a better example of that template, but sometimes for me it doesn't really matter because I like to figure out what the problem is. So if I run it, let's see what happens. 
well, there it is. It's moving it as it goes. So the updating allows me to see the results here. But it, once again, there's your origin. I mean, there's the origin here stays there, but the geometry's moved over to here. All right, so now to, let me control Z these again back to here. And instead, we're going to do a little change in the code here. Uh, one thing you can do is you can hold down the control key and with the scroll wheel, you can just zoom it in a little bit like that. Okay, I hope that helps. So now this this basically says go through all the vertices within the mesh and change their x coordinate by one. But let's just show you that it's actually changing the a single one. So let's go up here and put in a quick variable called counter. Counter equals zero. And then for down here I'll put in a conditional statement. A conditional statement will say if counter equals zero. If you're not familiar with this, when I say equals, I have to put two equals sign and that's a conditional check. So it's checking if the value of the counter is equal to zero. If it is, I'm going to have to indent that. Then uh, it's going to increment the x value by one and then within here I'm just going to set the counter back to one. one. And then since I'm setting it, it's just a single equal sign like that. All right, And that should be all that I really need to do. So what this is, it does, it just says um, as it's cycling through all the vertices within the mesh, when it gets to the very first instance of it, like here, I'm going to increment that by one. And then since I reset the counter, this won't execute anymore. So only one vertex should move. So let's run it. And we run the script. Let's see. Vertex equals one. I click here. Oh, what happened to my old, uh, oh, I control Z'd my other piece out of there. So that's why. <laughs> I was wondering why I didn't update. Okay. So there it is. So that's the first vertex within the list as we're cycling through all the vertices in the mesh. And there it is modified there. And since I didn't move them all, you can just see the origin still here. But if I was to move them all, the origin would still stay there like that. In fact, that origin's off. You could actually move that origin back to the geometry by doing this object transform. Let's see what happens. The origin to the geometry. And uh, I don't know if you could see it there. Probably moved it just a little bit off to make up for this x value being set here to the side. All right. Well, that's it for this lesson. It's an important, important lesson to know. We'll be dealing with meshes and we'll be dealing with the objects themselves. And then, uh, and then we can really do a lot of really cool stuff. Okay. And I'll see you in the next lesson.